Welcome to Refurbishing Solidarity, where our focus is on defragging tech activism together. Thanks for joining us for part four of our series. If you missed part three, you can find the link in the description. Do you feel that um, the union has been able to help you and support you through this time period? Yeah, yeah. Actually, I I went to union meetings even after I was fired for months. Uh, yeah, it was a critical, critical part of my, like, I guess, like, kind of emotional survival through that time period because yeah. I, I do fall prey to the like startup culture of having your personal identity tied in with your work identity. Yeah, tied in um, very tightly. Yep. Yes, I've been trying. I mean, I came up in tech through the world of accelerators, which is another like hyper concentrated version of the startup culture. And I've been trying to work myself like out of that. <laughs> but yeah, but when I was you know, I had moved from San Francisco to New York for this job. I live a couple blocks away from Kickstarter HQ so that I could go into work early and stay late. Um, so I, I, it was really, really hard to get fired and in such a public way and to be told yeah. that it was performance issues when I outperformed every metric I was <laughs> ever given. Uh, so I think, yeah, I think that that was tough, but the union really helped sounds like yeah it gave you a really good community to go through that experience with rather than having to take it on your own yeah and just to like talk through things like in the height of targeting from my manager um i would like walk around the block with my coworkers, and i i would ask them for advice and what to do and without their advice yeah. i don't know what i would have done that would have been even worse um <laughs> but yeah but it was very helpful so beyond um, kind of the supporting you emotionally through that process, what else do you see as the things that a union will be able to do at Kickstarter now that one exists? Yeah, I I don't know. I mean, because it's never been done before in tech. Yeah, uh, you know, first of all, like one thing they could do is make sure that everyone has due process. So no one is ever fired mm -hmm. again without, uh, you know, cause that is standardized <laughs> so yeah. um so that that's one thing uh but like pay bans salary transparency um like lots of different areas of social justice they could address with the union um and they could do all the things that they had asked hr to do and hr never did <laughs> so yeah but i i think like the sky's the limit like they could even do things like um like have a third party come in and look over all of the uh, performance reviews for unconscious bias. Like those are all things that you could sort of work into a union contract that would be really interesting and groundbreaking. Yeah. And then right now it does also seem like a lot of kind of the interactions that are going on between the union and management are very kind of antagonistic up through this point. Do you see a potential like way, framing or structure of how that relationship could be a more positive one in the future? Yeah, I think I think once the power is balanced a bit, it becomes less secretly antagonistic. Because the thing is, management did something really interesting in the union drive where they would continue to say like, oh, this union, it's tearing us apart. It's make, be, making people choose sides before we were a team. But there's this whole erasure of the power imbalance because when someone would challenge management, there were repercussions that the workers who talked to each other were definitely aware of, but workers who didn't talk to each other believed what management was saying. They were like, yeah, we are a team. I can go to HR. And some of us who had been around a while were like, have you ever tried going to HR? <laughs> To that degree, it sounds like a lot of kind of what you're seeing there is the ability to um, counter misinformation and stop uh, management from kind of setting the, the stage and the understanding of everything. Um, yeah. Kind of what I've seen so far with a lot of labor movements is people coming up to management and saying either you didn't do enough and this is what we want to see to correct that or um, you did something intentionally wrong and we want you to stop doing that intentionally wrong thing. Um, so it's a lot focused on what we want to see change about management. Mm -hmm. um, 
but then at the same time like there's a lot of issues that we're now bringing up within the tech labor movement that are broader than just workplace issues and management retaliating against workers they're more about like you know how do we structure the devices and the tools that we're building in the industry yeah um so do you see ways that um uh unions are able to kind of help really push that forward in a way that doesn't rely on going through management? Yeah, that's really interesting. I think unions right now, because they are sort of, I guess up into the point when you have a union and you're able to collectively pressure management, up until that point, you're sort of governed by the rules of the NLRA. Um, yeah. and the NLRA doesn't give workers room to challenge management on some of the issues that we see tech um, facing today. So things like no tech for ICE, like you don't really have protection to push back on that um, mm -hmm. as a worker. But once you have a union, I gosh, I don't know. I mean, I, I wasn't in the process of the Kickstarter union to know what it's like to bargain a contract or anything yeah. like that. but. Yeah. I assume that just by the fact that you are acting as a collective after you have a union, then it makes it easier to voice concerns over things like that and to push, put pressure on management. Yeah, I don't know if I answered your question, but <laughs> No, yeah. I mean, yeah, like that's, that's a large part of it. Cause like, I think there's a large element right now where a lot of people are a little bit confused about how tech activism should work. Because as you said, like it is pretty new and you know, we don't really have everything fine tuned of like how we're pushing forward. But I think, you know, there's so much that's interesting about how there's a dynamic now where rather than just trying to be a bunch of workers who are saying, I personally am getting hurt, please defend me. We are now looking at, you know, how are we can, going to change the world? And so like, uh, I'm definitely seeing through a lot of these stories of people who are rising up, so much that's coming from a desire to say, I care about what the company does with the yeah. rest of the world. What are the morals that we're demonstrating? And the story that you told about the, the book around punching Nazis, I, I see as being part of that, you know, more focused on what is the way that the company works with the public rather than how it works directly with employees um, in that situation. Yeah. And so like, I, I feel like there's a lot of kind of open questions as to um, what are the best structures, what are the best ways that we can actually make a difference in those ways. But arguably, I feel like unionizing has to be helpful in some ways towards that, because at the very least you're organized and you have people working together. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, at the very least you're, you're a group, you, you know, you have more power yeah. than you did before as an individual. Yeah, if you do something like strike, you there are like levers and procedures to help protect the worker in that situation uh, but if you strike without a union it's a little bit more of a tricky situation um or if you do a walkout <laughs> you know that there there are repercussions for that there there always are with management thanks for joining us for part four of our series in our conversation with clarissa we only have two more episodes and we're releasing them next week the next one will cover her post kickstarter solidarity projects and the final episode will be where Clarissa will give advice to different people who are engaged in similar efforts at their companies. Join our Patreon to get early access to full interviews and to join our Discord discussions. Please help this series by spreading it and interacting with your algorithms. And remember, a conversation is a first step towards solidarity.